All right, guys. Today I am going to explain you on lipoprotein metabolism. So, as you all know that uh, in lipoprotein metabolism, so the metabolism of chylomicrons, very de very low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins. These are the things we are going to discuss in lipoprotein metabolism. So, just to give you a brief introduction to lipoproteins, so we have chylomicrons, which are least dense, which have at least dense molecules, and then we have VLDL, which is a very low density lipoprotein, then we have IDL, intermediate density lipoprotein, LDL for low density lipoprotein, and then we have HDL, that is high density lipoprotein. Just to give you a brief idea about apolipoproteins, which are important on each of these molecules, for chylomicrons, Important apolipoproteins are apolipoprotein B48 and APOC2 and APOE. These are the important apolipoproteins. Then the VLDL molecule, very low density lipoprotein. Important apolipoproteins on the surface is APOB100 and then APOE and APOC2. For LDL, it is APOB100. For HDL, it is apolipoprotein A1. So these are all the important apolipoproteins present over the lipoprotein particles. Now along with this apolipoproteins, HDL particularly, it has got CETP that is cholesterol ester transport protein. Then it has got peroxinase which is an antioxidant enzyme and then it has got LCAT that is lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. With this introduction, let me begin with uh, lipoprotein metabolism. So, I will start with the absorption, digestion and absorption of the lipids. So, digestion of the absorption of lipid, I have a video on that in the YouTube. So, you can go to that video and uh, know the details of digestion and absorption. So, I will be very brief in uh, explaining you the digestion and absorption of lipids here. So, the dietary lipid, so the diet has got triacylglycerol, it has got cholesterol ester, it has got phospholipid, some of the free fatty acid and then it has got vitamin A, D, E, K. All this in the diet. So intestines absorb them. Basically it is absorbed in the brush border epithelium. So after the digestion done by, mediated by pancreatic enzymes. So the pancreatic enzymes that is pancreatic lipase along with the colipase. So I will just write uh, one of the brush border epithelium in the intestine. So the triacylglycerol in the lumen, it is digested into free fatty acids, free fatty acids and two monoacylglycerol, one molecule of two monoacylglycerol done by pancreatic lipase along with the colipase. This is need, this needs bile acids and bile salts, emulsification and all that process. So cholesterol ester digested by cholesterol esterase enzyme into cholesterol plus fatty acid. Then the phospholipid, phospholipid is digested into lysophospholipid and fatty acid and vitamin A, D, E, K, vitamin A, D, E, K. All of that, they all will undergo diffusion, simple diffusion. Only point that you need to remember here is cholesterol absorption is inefficient. Only 55% of the cholesterol is absorbed, 45% just goes in the feces. Once all these molecules are undergoing simple diffusion, they will be re-esterified into triacylglycerol, cholesterol ester, phospholipid and vitamin A, D, E, K. All of them, these molecules will be loaded onto FOB48 which is synthesized in the intestine. Okay, how the FOB48 is synthesized? FOB48 synthesis, it will undergo mRNA editing. So the mRNA for FOB100 is basically 48% translated. Why? Because in the intestine, there is an enzyme called cytidine deaminase. The cytidine deaminase, it is going to convert GAA into UAA. Cytidine deaminase. So GAA, which is coding for glutamine, normally it codes for glutamine. This is converted to UAA. And as you all know, UAA is a stop codon. So this job is done by cytidine deaminase enzyme. I am just writing it as CD here. Cytidine D aminase okay because of that so UAA becomes stop codon and translation is stopped and this happens when 48 percent of your mRNA for FOB100 is translated that's why you get FOB48 here 
So FOB48 after taking triacylglycerol, cholesterol ester, phospholipid and vitamin ADEK and this molecule we call it as chylomicron. And this chylomicron is a large molecule so it cannot be uh, secreted into the blood vessel. So initially it is secreted into lymphatics then it finds its way into the bloodstream. So once it is there in the bloodstream your chylomicron which has got triacylglycerol, cholesterol ester, phospholipid and ADEK. This chylomicron originally it has got FOB48 and it's going to and I write chylomicron as CM here. This is going to acquire FOC2 and FOE from HDL. So it, it gets FOC2, I'll write C2 here, FOC2 and FOE. It gets it from HDL. Okay. So once it gets that from HDL, this is a mature chylomicron. So the mature chylomicron as they move in the blood vessel and also note that entire lipoprotein metabolism is going on in the blood vessel. Okay. So as it is moving on in the blood vessels, so I'll write uh, the endothelium here. So consider this is the blood vessel. Let me change the color. This is the blood vessel and I am just writing the endothelium of the blood vessel. So and to the endothelium of blood vessel, LPA is attached, LPL is attached. That is lipoprotein lipase is attached to the endothelium of blood vessel with the help of aparon sulfate. Aparon sulfate is a glycosaminoglycon. So it is holding on to lipoprotein lipase. Now your chylomicron is moving in the circulation. As it is moving through this lipoprotein lipase, so the FOC2, especially this FOC2 here, it is going to activate lipoprotein lipase enzyme. So in connection with the FOC2, lipoprotein lipase is activated and what it does, it is going to break down triacylglycerol present in the chylomicrons and release free fatty acids. And those that free fatty acid will be taken up by the peripheral tissue, it gets into the peripheral tissue. Free fatty acid is getting into peripheral tissue and also it releases glycerol. So basically lipoprotein lipase is going to break down triacylglycerol into free fatty acid and glycerol molecule. So free fatty acid will be used for whatever the needs of the peripheral tissue for membrane formation and whatever the needs of it. Glycerol will go back to the liver and it will be converted to glycerol 3-phosphate and glycerol 3-phosphate can be used to make triacylglycerol or glycerol 3-phosphate can be converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate and that can get into glycolysis. That's the fate of glycerol coming from chylomicron because chylomicrons are formed only when you are in well-fed condition. Chylomicron metabolism is going on in the well-fed condition. And also note that insulin is going to stimulate your lipoprotein lipase enzyme. In the presence of insulin, expression of lipoprotein lipase increases. It means metabolism of chylomicrons also increases. Anyway, with the action of this lipoprotein lipase, so continuous degradation of triacylglycerol occurs. At some point in time, FOC2 will go back to HDL. There will be release of FOC2. Okay. So once that happens, you are calling this molecule as chylomicron remnant. So remaining portion of chylomicron, so I will write it as CM remnant, chylomicron remnant. This chylomicron remnant, now it has got FOB48 then it has got FOE and also it has got more in now it is rich in cholesterol cholesterol ester then it has got some amount of triacylglycerol of course it has got phospholipid and vitamin A D E K all these fat soluble vitamins are still there okay now it will be taken up by the liver so the chylomicro remnants will be taken up by the remnant receptors present over the hepatocyte membrane. So this receptor is FOE receptor, FOE receptor, FOER receptor. Chylomicron remnants will go and bind with the FOE receptor. Basically FOE is recognized by FOE receptor and it is internalized. Basically it is going to offload all the content means cholesterol, cholesterol ester, then vitamin A, D, E, K, vitamin A, D, E, K, some amount of phospholipid whatever is there in the chylomicron remnant is offloaded and also of course the protein is degraded into amino acids basically 
FOB48, FOE, all that is degraded into amino acids. That's what is, that's the fate of chylomicron ruminants. Okay. So overall in this metabolism, what we have seen, chylomicrons are formed in the intestine. They are matured in the circulation by gaining FOC2 and FOE from HDL. Then lipoprotein lipase is activated by FOC2 and it is going to degrade triacylglycerol into free fatty acid and glycerol. Free fatty acid is used by the peripheral tissue wherever that is going on. Glycerol will go back to the liver. Glycerol will be taken back to the liver here. Get into the, get into the liver glycerol. Glycerol is converted to glycerol 3 phosphate and this can be going into triacyl glycerol formation or glycerol 3 phosphate converted to DHAP and DHAP gets into glycolysis. That's the fate of glycerol coming from chylomicrons okay and insulin keeps your lipoprotein lipase active in the presence in the well-fed condition there is more and more metabolism of chylomicrons so at the end of it all chylomicron converted to chylomicron remnant it has got cholesterol ester cholesterol phospholipid vitamin e adk all that is taken to the liver and offloaded there this is how your dietary lipids are carried from intestine and they will end up in the liver except that triacylglycerol portion is used by the peripheral tissue. Each peripheral tissue they will express different kinds of LPL. Say so skeletal muscle, sorry, the cardiocyte LPL it has got low KM, it means it's going to act on chylomicrons most of the time. Whereas adipose tissue LPL it has got high KM, it means it's a low affinity enzyme. It will use chylomicron only when there are plenty of chylomicrons in the circulation.